Yeah, it sounds like somebody did. Yeah, evidently somebody did. Must have beat them. Mm. Well, here we are, October 1st, 2014. And it's a Wednesday, Wednesday night, and we are approximately two days from the from uh, Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. Um, it's really interesting because what's considered the Day of Atonement is really the, the tenth day of the uh, New Year coming in after Rodolfo Shira de Sindra Aspa. Um, this is really a great time because this is the new year in the realm of the spirit. Um, one of the things that you know you learn as a Christian is you start off, but you don't know everything. And as you mature and grow, as you continue to do so, you learn more and more things. And you know, for a few years now, I've just been looking at the Hebrew calendar and, you know, and I'm thinking about it from the aspect of it was God's calendar. Now the world that we live in, we're on a Gregorian calendar, which uh, actually it added a whole bunch of months. But all of this was done on purpose. It was, it was done on purpose to get us off of God's calendar. And when you really stop and, and just use a little common sense to really stop and think about it, um, all of this was done to disrupt, actually, us moving in, in unison with God's cycle. That's one of the things, if we had, uh, and I mean we, I'm talking about the church, uh, if the church itself had stayed more in line with the original intent, we would have, but see, the world, see, the world took, took thing over. Uh, that's why, you know, people think that I'm, that I'm, I'm being mean by saying certain things, but that's, that's not the truth. And some people, <clears throat> excuse me, even in the church, will erroneously think so. And that's really because they, they lack the wisdom, but, you know, but it, they don't understand how God really started things off with the church and how it got away. The, the origin or the roots of the, of the church are Hebrew. Or Jewish, they they are the, the the origin. Therefore, when you look at, and this is why I'm always emphasizing to people that Christianity is not a Western religion. It's not European in nature. It is Middle Eastern, and if you keep the emphasis where it's supposed to be, then all your perspectives become in line. Um, that's why a lot of times we don't understand some of the things about the Bible and what it's really saying is because we're looking at it from a Eurocentric lens and that throws us off a lot of times. Um, as we come more and more in line, we find out a lot of things and you know, and, you know the funny part about it is God overlooks our ignorance a lot, a lot of time until we finally get the revelation and a lot of times people don't, don't realize a lot of times um, the Lord, you know, he'll see us doing something. And, and this is a lesson for us all, not just talking about the Hebrew calendar. This is for other things as well. Um, we can be doing something that's not in line with God for years. And the Lord doesn't always, he doesn't always hit you over the head. You know, a lot of times, um, one of the problems with, with people in general is that they, so, they think God is this, this uh, old guy with a beard you know, up in heaven, and he's just waiting to whack you upside the head, you know, or you're behind when you do something wrong. But a lot of times, you know, because God is merciful, and he just has this mercy on us and this grace, we'll be doing all we know how to do, but a lot of times we may, and it doesn't mean that we're doing sin necessarily. What it is is that we're just out of line with something, because we didn't get the proper teaching, because of how Christianity was taken and skewed and separated from its roots of Judaism. 
And because of that, as we mature and grow, we begin to learn more and more, and we begin to find out more and more knowledge. And the Bible says, in the last days, knowledge will increase. Well, you know, I used to always, um, I was really perplexed how folk a hundred years ago, what they didn't know. But, you know, and I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of scripture-wise. But what, what happened was, was that, excuse me, you stop and think about it, there became this separation between God and man. And because of that, it took time. And here's what generally happens. God will give somebody a revelation. But this revelation is, is new to people. And unfortunately, human nature, folk don't always respond to the truth in a good way. And then sometimes, even worse, the people that receive the revelation get persecuted. They get persecuted by the old guard, who first of all are dull of hearing, and they can't hear the voice of God. And sometimes it's jealousy and strife because they're mad because God didn't give them a revelation. Because for some people, it's all about them. And so, many, many times, God will have given somebody a revelation, but they get persecuted so bad. And sometimes, when a person decides that they're going to go to revelation, sometimes that's when you get a church split. So, you know, that's why a lot of people don't understand a lot of times it can take a while. You know, in the natural, you can have a really good idea about something. And it may take 20 years before it really begins to really take hold. And I mean, unfortunately, it can happen like that in the church. But as man got away from religion, because religion is not Christianity. And religion... Uh, Primarily, when I'm speaking of when I say religion, I'm speaking of people uh, doing things as ritual forms and ceremony. There's no life to it. There's no revelation, and you just got people just going through the motions. The New Testament says, "Having a form of godness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away." And a lot of what's going on in the church world today, in the Christian church, that's what's happening. It's dead, cold, and dry. And then people will knock up folk don't want to go to church. And then a lot of folks that's going, they're tired of it. And there is a real hunger for the things of God. And, and you know, that's one thing that, you know, I try to explain to people. They missed it, though, because they were so dumb. They were used to religion. I told people, God sent me to the body of Christ. He didn't send me to a denomination. He sent me to the body of Christ. Now, I want you to be reminded that Jesus told the disciples, the apostles who he handpicked. Remember, they saw some other people who were now the 12 casting out devils, and the disciples got mad. They got upset. They said, Lord, we see people casting out devils. Who are not who are not you know part of us? And he said, "I have cheap you know not many folds." And see, people miss that a lot of times. Um, I met people who thought that the only church that was right was their church. Now I know that sounds ridiculous. I know it sounds ludicrous, and that's true. I've met people. I've met people. I've met black people. I've met white people, and they felt like if you were not in their movement or their denomination, you weren't exactly quite right. And some of them will tell you, you know, we are the people that are that are, that are right. Ain't nobody else right but us. And I tell people, no, that, that, that's not possible. That doesn't make sense. And there are certain denominations that teach, really ain't nobody right but them. And I know you, I know you sitting there going like, well, which, what are some of them? Well, some of them, you know, some of them can be Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran. But a lot of you, but the Jehovah's Witnesses say ain't nobody right with them. Really, the moon was saying nobody right with them. And if anybody needs to be saved, it's the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons. 
Well, there is there are people in that go to their churches. They truly believe some things, but that that basic doctrine is not correct. But there are people because of God's mercy and grace has touched people. There are Jehovah's Witnesses in in Mormonism. But basically, a lot the majority of what they teach is false doctrine. But I got news for you: it's a lot of us so-called Orthodox Christianity uh, churches. There's false doctrine being taught as well. So you know, it's not like they got the you know, you know the old the old little group that's not teaching things that aren't correct. You would be surprised if you were to sit down sometimes and talk with people and find out what they believe, what you know, what they believe as opposed to what the Bible says. Now, since I opened this up, let me the Lord have me say this. I used to used to work with a guy, a real nice guy, who was a Mormon, you know, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. And he said, Larry, he said, you know, when I read the Book of Mormon, he said, I can understand that. He said, when I read the Bible, I don't understand it. That's exactly what he told me. But it makes sense because what's being taught. Out of the Book of Mormon is not what's being taught in the Bible. See, what it is, you can't understand the, the Bible unless what? The Holy Spirit teach you. See? See, so that goes to show you something had to be wrong. And I told him, I said, well, how did, what did I tell him? I think I told him that he needed to pray and ask God to give him some understanding, because you know, I was trying to use wisdom and trying to minister to him. Because I didn't want to tell him right flat out, well, you know, really what you believe is not right anyway. Um, you know, you you want to you want to try to use some wisdom and minister to people. Um, and uh, but see, that was a dead giveaway right there. And he he confessed that to me. He said he read the Book of Mormon, he could understand that. But when he read the Bible, he now he knew something was wrong. See, he had no sense to know something. Now, wait a minute now. The Bible is what? what Most Christians use the Bible. You know, suppose all Christians use the Bible. You know, and he's, he, he was perplexed because he could not understand. He said, I read the Bible. I can't understand it. But I can understand the Book of Mormon. Right. We're really going to show you what? Those two books didn't come from the same spirit. You know, so. But um, I'm, I thank God, again, because God's mercy and grace that there's some there's some people that are going to the Mormon church that God's touching and they're getting saved. Um, I remember years ago that Marilyn Hickey, I hope some of y'all have heard of Marilyn Hickey, Marilyn Hickey uh, was actually invited by a group of female Mormons to come speak to them. So see, that's what I try to get people to understand. Media Christian media is very, very important because if people are truly interested in Christ, regardless of their denomination, if you are on Christian media, like television, radio, the internet, somebody can run across you, even somebody who may not think Christianity is the right thing. They could be of another persuasion, another religion. They could be in. They could be. Uh, they could be in the wicker. But the Spirit of God can touch that person. Remember, the Bible says what? Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And the Bible also says, the Spirit has got to draw a real person. That's how you get saved. So the whole thing about this is, is that media makes a difference. Nine times out of ten, those Mormon women that either seen Mary Hickey on TV, maybe got a video, maybe read some of her books, and they had a retreat, and they invited her to come speak to them. Now, Marilyn, her, I'm not remember correctly, Marilyn said she was very surprised that, you know, that Mormon women would be interested in, in listening to her. But, you know, the Lord told her to go. And when she got there, she had a great meeting. And guess what? 
A whole bunch of men and women got saved. So see, I'll, I'll have to say this the way that Paul made, made a statement. He said, if they're talking, at least talking about Jesus, then I glory in my God that at least Jesus' name is being used. So, and see, this goes for everybody regardless. God saves Muslims, but guess what? The Quran speaks of Jesus. So since they know Jesus, now they don't know Jesus in the, in the right capacity. They know him as a prophet instead of the prophet. But guess what? If you got the true spirit of Jesus, and especially if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can talk to a Muslim and you can break through that, that spiritual darkness. And guess what? The real Jesus will touch him. In fact, the last few years, even during the time of their consecration, during Ramadan, Jesus had been showing up in, in visions and speaking directly to Muslims and telling them that I am Jesus, Jesus Christ, and explaining to them what that Christ means, the anointed one. And a lot of Muslims have gotten saved. And many times they've gotten saved and they're living overseas. When them people will behead you. Or they will, they'll certainly banish you. Your, your family will disown you. But a lot of them are doing it. Because they believe in it. Um, each day. That's been going on. Ishma Soto Shira Descendite. Sunday. Since the day of trumpets that we just went through. Each day is called a Tishrei. That means beginning. So so we are heading down to the tenth Tishrei, which is called the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. The way a lot of Americans would say is Yom Kippur. <laughs> uh, but it means at atonement uh, to atone if you're going to atone for something then you're, you're really, it's, it's really talking about repentance um, in the traditional Hebraic sense it means certainly a time of reflection a time of consecration I'm, I'm going to be talking about consecration um because of what, they, what is generally done, what many Jews will do, uh, and it, it actually starts Friday. It's really, really, it's the eve. Because Friday, remember, Jewish holidays do not really start until sundown. So really at sundown, Friday, is the start. Of Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement, you know, is really Saturday. And it's a time of reflection. It's a time, again, of uh, repentance. You know, uh, it's a time. And a lot, a lot of people fast. In fact, it's a one day fast for the Day of Atonement. So, really, you could start the fast um, at sundown Friday. And fast at least a sundown Saturday. And now I've never done a day of atonement fast. I may have fasted through that period before, but you know, but I've never observed it as the day of atonement and done it. And see, that's that's see, that's what I'm saying is so fascinating about this is because as you line up with God. And start doing things a way that he uh, has his people do to do these things. Cause see, remember, God said these are my feast, and you you need to observe them. Well, according to what God told His people in the Old Testament, He said, "At my feast, I'm gonna meet you. It's gonna be a time, gonna be a, a greater time of fellowship." 
So see, that's what's so great about it is, is that when you come with the right attitude, God can do some tremendous things because you are meeting him at a set time. Really, this is what you would call a Kairos moment. Because it's a it's a it's a set time. And Kairos moments are very, very important. A Kairos moment can change your life. And you know, I'm believing the way that things have been going, that this Day of Atonement, especially the way the observance of it, it will be a great move of God because we've set it up for that to be a great time. See, remember, God meets you at the point of your need, but he also meets you at the point of your expectation. If you expect God to move, then God will move. That's why I'm looking at this Day of Atonement this year, different from any Day of Atonement that I've ever paid attention to before. So see, again, this is a learning experience for me because I see it as being different from any Day of Atonement. Because I'm looking at it through a total Hebraic lens. Therefore, it's going to be different this time. So this goes back to your confession. You don't have what you say. Why? Because you're expecting it. And God meets people at that point at the point they need in their expectation. So th that's why it, this is really, really exciting to look at what God is doing. And again, in your relationship, how you grow and how you start to learn more about his calendar and moving in his calendar. Because, like I said, I wish I, you know, I studied this. I really studied the Hebrew calendar really about, about 12 years ago. It was really, I really began to pay more attention to it in 2002. But at the same time, I was in Bible school and, go, and get, I went back to college at the same time. Yeah, I enrolled in Gifford College at the same time. So really, it was, a, it was a stretching. Because all of a sudden, I'm back into the academic world while I'm studying the Bible at the same time. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was a lot. You know, so, but I'm looking, again though, but looking at the progression, um, it's really, really interesting because you start seeing different things and, you know, what I want people to understand is this. Um, like I was speaking about earlier, a lot of times, we don't always understand everything in its entirety. We grow in increments. And depending on what we're doing, how much we get out of it. Man, if I, I wish I got hold of this 12 years ago when I first started studying it. But that's the whole thing about it. Um, many, many times, you know, you wonder why God will do things the way he does, though. But, but many times, you know, the enemy will do something to distract you or throw you off or you get caught up in doing something else and you really don't think about it because there's so much that you can study and there's so much that you can do. But one of the things that I want to do in this new year, because this is, this is God's new year, because God's calendar, um, you know, the Gregorian calendar, you know, they added months for, it, for us to get 12 months. You know, so the calendar, so that, this was done on purpose. And that's what I'm trying to get across to people. The calendar that we're on today, the world's on a different calendar because they don't want us to be on God's calendar. That, that's what I want you to understand. If you, and another thing, too, and I'm, I'm glad the, the Jason, Jason, Jason Walker walked in, made me think about something that I just saw on Facebook. I didn't really look at the video. My son has put up at least one video, maybe two, about astrology and all. But I can say this. 
One of the reasons why they added months was so they could throw astrology in there. Because astrology is based on that calendar. So the thing about it is, is those of you who are into astrology you need to drop it because really it's witchcraft. When you start getting deep into that stuff, and the Bible speaks very plainly, not to be given to the stargazers, prognosticators. God talks trash about it. Really is what he does. He lets you know that, you know, that those who do those things will be turned into the lake of fire. Um, there are people who get so deep into that that they want to know stuff about them. Now, I, I know we're, we're born at certain times of the year, but we're not to delve into that. That's not the same thing as astronomy. Astrology and astronomy are not the same thing. You, you start getting real deep into the astrological stuff, and it's nothing but witchcraft. And there are plenty of church folk, they, they look at their astrology uh, thing in the uh, paper, Oh. Your zodiac sign. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, oh, horoscope. When, when, I, when, when we were young, oh, that was a big thing. It's not, it's not as big when y'all come along. They do it soon. Y'all don't do it. It's not as big when y'all come along. As it was when we were in our, our 20s. Oh, it was a much bigger thing then. But that's because a lot of stuff opened up in the occult world through the 60s and 70s. Um, they do it different, different other ways now. But here's how the devil slick though. Now, I remember when I first got on the internet back in the 90s, and you know, AOL was big then. So, when I got my AOL mail account, guess what? They started sending me stuff about astrology. You know, people trying to, trying to get you to uh, go, to their, go to their website, click on their stuff uh, all the time. You know, so they had more subtle ways how to do it. But those of you who are following your sign or heavy, you need to leave it alone. Yes, I know there's some validity to it. I, that's why you need to leave it alone. Because I know there are certain traits that I do have that a Scorpio would have. You know, I'm not, I'm not denying that some of that stuff's not real. But what I'm saying is you can't get caught up in it because that's still the flesh. And you have to recognize that can hinder you. So you want to kill all that stuff out. I used to work with a girl that she was so deep into it. I, I figured out what she was doing because she was asking me some questions about myself. She asked me, when was I born, you know? I told her about total 31st. And she said, well, do you know what time of the day you were born? And I said, yeah, I, I know. Because I remember seeing it on my, my birth certificate. You know, well, when, when my wife and I come along, what was considered a birth certificate was what you would call a photostat today. It ain't like it is now when you, when you got to go and get an official one with a seal on it. You know, that photostat, my wife and myself and all, and all our peers took those to the school. That's how you got registered for school. And I really, for years, I walked, for a while, I walked around mine my wallet. And that was your... That was your birth certificate. Now, they said that don't count. Now you got to go to the county courthouse and pay money, because we didn't pay for that, and and get one with a seal of the state on it now. But at any rate, the young lady was asking me all these questions. And you know what? She came in the next day or two and just started telling me all about myself. And she was on the money. But what it was, I found out. <coughs> she had a book about this thick <coughs> that delved very heavily into it, <coughs> into astrology. I mean, uh, uh, that astrology science stuff. Mm -hmm. And what she would do is she would ask you, what you know, where were you born? What sign? And <coughs> did you know what time you were born? And she told me. 99.9% of my personality. <clears throat> Outside of Christ, she did. And when she did that, I said, wait a minute. Is that related to prognosticating? Yes. And see, and see, there are some prognosticators or root doctors or readers. That's how they will work stuff. They will see, they will ask you, 
you know, whether they're trying to chart stuff for yourself or somebody trying to find something about, they try to find out, do you know this about it? You know, do you know this about it? And if they can find out, so they can pinpoint more stuff down. So like if you were born at, at, at uh, 11 58 uh, in the morning, if they know that, if they know uh, what your sign is, they know what day your birthday is, that helps them to divine, because that's what that is. That's another form of deviation, uh, divination. So, so, and, and what she did was, the book she had had been that thick. And when, and, you know, so she was able to go through the pages and, and it, it listed certain things about a person's personality based off the day they were born and the time. Because when she asked me that, I said, wait a minute. When she came back and was telling me stuff about myself, I said, wait a minute. I said, now she knowing too much. I said, now she, she, she's heavy into this. But so she didn't go anywhere. She had to book at the house. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you can look at. But, um, you know, I'm going to tell people, you know, you want to, you want to have the right source. And so if you have been into astrology, well, you can take time to get before the Lord and atone for this. You can start tonight, but you can certainly take time from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. And see, that's what repentance is about. It's just to tell God, I'm sorry. You know, if you got the books to your house, the Lord probably had me talk about this because somebody who may have some astrology stuff to their house. You need to get it out of your house because you're drawing a spirit. You bring a spirit into your house that's not right. So if you have any stuff like a book, or a, you know you, you may know somebody's got charts or whatever, get out of that stuff. Stop going to look at it because you might be having stuff coming to you in your email every day. And all you all they're doing you consulting consulting with with demons. You need to stop doing that. So this is part of what that day of atonement is about. Is uh is about us working on getting ourselves right. And since this is the start of a new year, spiritually, that's that's the, that's the really cool part about it. Now, I can look back on my life now and realize that God did some things for me. I just didn't know what time it was. Um, I got the Lord before this, sometime before this period was when I got, when I came back to the Lord. Right around this time of year. Um, Me too. Yeah. It's November now. Mm -hmm. But see, that's still part of that progression that's coming in. It starts. See, a lot of a lot of things happen from from really the last six weeks to the end of the natural calendar year. It's a great time and a great movement of God at that time. That's what I. That's what I'm looking. That's what I'm saying. What will happen is. You'll stop and go, like, wait a minute, as you learn more about God and his calendar, then you can start looking back, and you can start seeing things that, wait a minute, so-and-so happened this time, at that time. So-and-so and so happened at that time. And see, so you start to put it together. It's just like uh, David and Stephen Herzog. They started putting things together. They start saying, well, wait a minute. When we have these meetings at this time of the year, it's very different. From when we had these other meetings, and we notice when we had these meetings, you know, there's a certain blessing that's on it. But they, they didn't know it, they were moving in God's time. And that's what I'm saying. I'm, I've looked back and realized that time when we uh, went to West Mount. And we were there for what, nine weeks? Yeah, about nine weeks. But we ended it just around this time. It was sometime in, it was sometime in September, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. It's been a long time ago. It's been about 33, 34 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it was sometime that we were uh, 
It was it was right around this time. It was sometime in August and September. So again, a lot of times you're doing things, you just don't know what you're doing. You know. And when then later on the Lord will reveal to you what's going on. That's why I say a lot of times when your heart is sincere, you may not have had the teaching or the revelation, but because you're doing all you know how to do. And you you don't know you just you're doing it in that time of God's move, but by your heart being sincere and wanting to do the Lord's work, he's still moving. You just don't quite understand all the inner workings of what's going on at that time. You know, that reminds me of just the general principle of just being obedient and submissive to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, uh you know, the word says that, you know, he'll lead you into all truth. It says that the Holy Spirit is the teacher of all things, you know, and just, you know, Isaiah 55 and 8 says that his thoughts on our thoughts and his ways on our ways. But just listening to the voice of God and following the voice of God a lot of times, even and even especially in the times where you don't have a clue of what to do or how to do it. If you just listen and just do those things, it's like as he reveals, it's like he'll bring it back and then, you know, stuff will start to make sense. But. Sometimes just listening to save your life, even mm -hmm. if you don't know the particular. So I can attest to that even right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's one thing about not being dull of hearing. And many, many times we we might be dull of hearing, don't 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 realize that we are that we just aren't listening. Um, I was talking with the Lord about you know for for years I gave this testimony about how the uh, Holy Spirit touched me. In my church, a little boy at ten, but sitting in this very—it's amazing—in this very room. But it was the old sofa that was sitting over there. I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit brought it back to me, going to revival with my mama in prayer meetings when I was a little boy, no more than about four or five years old, in the Prairie Baptist Church, Johnson Chapel Church on Bell Avenue in Tarboro, North Carolina. And all of a sudden, I said, "Wait a minute." And I remember as a little boy, like little kids will do, I remember doing the prayer meeting, the old revival, how little kids will walk, walk, walk the bench down. I remember being in the church with my mama, and I, I, I never, never knew the man's name, but I can see him. He had his robe on. He was, a, he was an older man. He had gray in his hair, and he wore a beard, and he was, he was up speaking. And I remember feeling the Holy Spirit. But see, it took me sitting here in this room. God probably reminded me of that maybe 20 years or so ago. And I went, my, no, my had been 20 years. And I remember thinking, well, Lord, why in the world did you wait so long to remind me of that? You know, like you said, the, the Bible says what the Spirit will lead you to your altar and he will what? He will he will remind you, bring things back to your remembrance. And I said, Well, Lord, why did you let me give that testimony? Well, I wasn't lying, but I didn't remember that. But I said, Why did you wait so late to remind me of what had happened? It's like I was sitting there and all of a sudden he spoke to me. And say, you know, you felt me in that church as a little boy. I had forgotten that. What had happened was really about five or six years before I got saved at 10. I was four or five years old when I was in that church, Johnson Chapel with my mama. You know, but, it, but and it's, it's like I said, well, Lord, why didn't you tell me? <clears throat> you know, but it, that's what I said about God. He's merciful. And he does things that way. You know, I tell people, nobody gets saved overnight. Nobody backslides overnight. So the thing about it is, is you, pay, you need to pay attention when God is sometimes speaking to people because just because they may still be doing certain things don't mean God ain't dealing with them. Doesn't mean God's not really working with them. And, and, and I think a lot of times, sometimes church folk forget that. That you got to realize that the Lord is working on somebody, and that just like 
we are still in a state of being perfected. They're moving into perfection themselves. And so we have to pay attention and to know when God, God has actually got his hand on a man or a woman. And he's dealing with them. So, you know, and, well, that's one of the things that you, you can't learn, though, when you mention people and when you pass them for because <laughs> you got you, you deal with folk and they're in all kinds of states and yeah. yeah the enemy coming at them you know and they're going through this and they're going through that and you're in the middle of it you know uh, and with Christ you know looking to you as a medi mediator between you know them and and, uh, and and God so something to think about let me just read a little bit just a little bit to you about the Day of Atonement. You know, these are considered the days of awe that we're in now. Um, but um, let me just read just a little bit here. Yom, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is the holiest day of the Jewish year and provides prophetic insight regarding the second coming of, of, the, of the Messiah is really what it is. The restoration of national uh, Israel and the final judgment of the world. And also then it reveals a high priestly work of Yeshua or Jesus. As I call him Gadol, the high priest after or the Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Um, let's see. Uh, the Torah states that Yom Kippur is the only time when the high priest can enter into the Holy of Holies and call upon the name of Yahweh to offer the blood sacrifice for the sins of the people. The life for a life principle is the foundation of the sacrificial system and marks a great day of intercession made by the high priest on behalf of Israel. Well, you know, the Bible says what? Jesus Christ is our high priest now and a chief apostle. So that's so people people are always asking, how can one man die for the world? Well, instead of the high priest going in and rolling your sins ahead for a year by by uh, doing the blood sacrifices and, and getting covered in blood. Jesus himself was covered in blood. Why? Be because he was making that atonement. He was but the lamb that was slain even before the foundation of the, of the, of the world. Um, remember, the, the, remember, generally, really the way that Jesus was really made a sacrifice, they won't show him. They won't even show him anymore because he was so bloody. Can you imagine the crown of thorns and thorns? I've seen some thick th thorns in my day. I, I think that they make them bigger. I mean, I've seen thorns probably about that, yeah. that deep. Yeah, but they, they're that long. They're not long on the pie candle. Yeah, you know, so you think about it, and they made a crown and they just stuck them right dead into his head. And, and uh, remember the Bible says what? They pulled his beard and ripped it out. So if you rip out, chunks of somebody's beard right. it's going to be bloody you know so then you think about if the candy nine tails got the little balls on the end and they they figured it out which means they had, they had to kill somebody they figured the worst that they can give you and, and you live is 39 stripes they said a 40 one you probably lose too much you die what from loss of blood why because those things would dig and rip, rip flesh out so what? So so your back is really open and it's bleeding. Then on top of that, they had to drag the cross. Pressing that up against the open the open wound. That's more scraping and scratching. It, it more scraping and scratching. Jesus was a bloody mess. So he too was bloody just like the high priest. And we ain't talking about what happened when they when they put the nails through the wrist and the feet. You know, they what? They pierced him in the side. Blood and water gushed out. So he was a bloody mess. Something thing about it is it makes you rethink the crucifixion <clears throat> now, doesn't it? It really does. Really, they won't really show uh, Jesus. The depictions we see, whether it's a drawing or even in movies, they won't really show it because it would be gory. 
it really, people probably would be very, very angry if they saw it. But uh, a true depiction would be very, very bloody. Skin. Yeah, his skin was torn all to pieces. Yeah. You know. Then again, he understood without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Yeah, and, and, and that's what it really was. It was a shedding of blood. You know, it was it was it was a shedding of blood. Um, it wasn't a cute thing. Man. No, it wasn't. It, it really, really wasn't. Um, See that's see that's what that's what the atonement is. The thing about this is what man man set up, but God God had a better way to do it when He sent Jesus, when He sent the second Adam. So that's why I'm saying that I'm becoming even more appreciative of what God set up, but then He set up a better way that Jesus would go ahead and just do it for all. All mankind, one time, the the perfect sacrifice. When you start looking at it, and you start seeing it, and you start seeing seeing the parallels, and because um, remember when Moses went up on Mount Sinai, and he came back down. <clears throat> he went back up, and he came back down. This was his time of the year. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. But yeah, yeah, it may, it may. That's what I'm saying. I'm really seeing how God is doing all this, and it makes sense how how after Moses done spent the forty days with God, because really this is really coming to that period of time when Moses was up on the mountain. See, all, see, and when he come down, it's a day of atonement. See, all this, all this begins to make so much sense to you. And you know what makes even more sense? I just thought about like it would make perfect sense for at the beginning of one year and at the beginning of the other that God would present all these opportunities to get cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And then the scripture immediately came to me: If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And now he has all these cool opportunities for us to become a new creature. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing. To me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say you really begin to to really see this, and that's what I'm looking at, and uh, I'm that's what I'm saying. It's such a learning experience for me because I'm seeing all these parallels, and I'm seeing again, like you say, how God has set this up. Because remember, if in other words, this is the whole it's there on the Hebrew calendar that's coming up. That's why, um, like I said, I'm realizing gee, just how powerful this is. Well, it's what we were talking about last week about the convocation. Was that the convocation leading up until when Moses went up on? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so yeah. Yeah. That's the leading up to it. So all of that stuff was being done <clears throat> these those those forty days, and in the forty days when he came down off the mountain. That was the day of atonement. So that's why I said about when you start seeing the parallels, then you start seeing how powerful time it really is. And that's why I said as we are gaining more and more knowledge, that means we're opening ourselves up to a more powerful move of God. Why? Because we got more understanding. And we're moving more in his plan. See, the cool part about it is Jesus, his plan was this. Father, I pray you make them one as you and I are one. And we do become, what the Bible says, that one new man. We're learning how to draw upon the beginning, the Torah, the Pentateuch. And we're bringing it into the new covenant. The way we're supposed to. Christianity is what his roots are, are Hebrew or Jewish. When we, when we bring it in in the right perspective, it makes it more powerful because we link up with its origin. And we do it in a way that honors God from the beginning to now. Because remember, Jesus came to who first? 
the house of Israel. To the Jew first, to the Jew first then, then to the Gentile. So we learn about we learn about how to pull it pull it all together. And the more we pull it together, the more we become more and more aware of what he's doing. Because he's king of kings, Lord of Lords. This too will help us as we do run across the Jew. Yeah. yeah, so you know it's like I said, it's 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 just amazing. And sometimes too you can connect with them because you can say, Well, so and so and so is coming up and they'll be like, What do you mean? And they might say, You observe that? And then you say, Yeah. And then you explain to them why you do. I learned uh Revelations twenty two and thirteen last night in Hebrew. I know how to say it in Hebrew now. I in my prayer time yesterday, uh, as I was speaking in my prayer language, I kept saying this word, and it just resonated in me after that. And God said, you know, later on they looked that word up. So I looked up the word or phrase He gave me, and it led to <laughs> Revelations twenty two and thirteen. Where it says, you know, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first and last. You know, I'm Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. And I know how to say it in, in Hebrew now. How do you say it? Enochi Aleph Vital. Rishon Ver Aron Rosh Vesov. Wow, that sounds that sounded pretty good. Yeah, I kept saying it. I kept saying it. It just, when the first time I heard it, I listened to the uh, translation over and over again. Uh -huh. I got in my spirit, and it connected to what the Lord was saying through me earlier that day in prayer. And even my whole walk home, I quoted that scripture in Hebrew the whole way home, and uh, it's just been resonating with me. Um, I'm also in the process of learning the Aaronic, uh, the Aaronic blessing mm -hmm. from Numbers chapter six. It's gonna take a little while because it's about four stanzas of that stuff. Well, that's and not, it, yeah. it's read differently too. It's read from right to left. So, yeah. Well, see, all original languages read from right to left. Left to right is European. <laughs> that makes more sense on the whole other level. <laughs> see, yeah. All original languages read read from right to left. See that? See, I, I brought this up in in one of my classes at Guilford College in my uh, um. Which class was it? Because that was when one of my classmates. She's 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 very she's very intelligent, but she's not that learned and not that sophisticated. And one of my classmates, well, I would say things in this class, and she would laugh. Now I thought laugh at you, thinking that you're wrong, and I would say things, and she would laugh. And every time I would be right, you know. And she, she learned some things, you know, because I, I thought, wow, isn't it amazing at your age, you don't know, and you're laughing at me thinking I'm wrong. Because I remember making a statement. I said, all the original languages read from right to left. And she laughed. And then the teacher said, that's right, Larry. And you know, the, yes, yes. But see, again, what? We are what? Eurocentric. Yeah. See? So she, that's what I'm saying. People don't know the original stuff. And not being funny, but the original languages were the language of brown people. And the original languages read from right to left. Semantic languages. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Right. That's right. Semantic. It goes from right to left. But most people don't know this. You read Hebrew, that's right. You read from right to left. That's one reason how come they, that's about it, how they are. In the Middle East, about the left hand. You go go to Islamic country. That's why they don't use the left hand to eat. They use that for bowel movement to wipe the behind. That's that, that's what yeah. That's that's why they would they would be very fit if you use your left hand. I had to be praying all the time if I was in, in the Middle East if I was around certain people. Cause I'm left handed. And even in even in the the Roman world, the word. For in Latin, the word sinister, where we get sinister, means from the left or evil. So even other cultures consider the left to be a deviant 
thing. So you know, uh, you know. That, that, so if you're culturally sensitive, and you had to know to you'd be careful. If you were going to do, if I was going to use my left hand, if I was say in a guest of somebody, for say like if I was in somebody who may have an Islamic background. I would ask them would they be offended if I use my left hand. You know what this all reminds me of? In America, very little things in America, period, in the Western world is original at all. But see, that's true. But see, but they don't teach this as such, so people get shocked to find this thing. Like I said, my classmate, who she was Caucasian, she was laughing at me, stuff I would say. She, I mean, I'm talking about, think about, imagine being in elementary or junior high or high school, and you said something, and the person in your class laugh at you. Yeah. That's what she was doing. She was laughing at me. She just knew I was wrong. And I looked at her like, and I said, all oh, which languages, you know, read from right to left, and she looked at me like, and just laughed at me. Like, she had never heard it, so she just knew it couldn't have been correct. And when, I, and when the teacher said I was, I was right, you should have seen her face. And guess what? She stopped laughing too. Look, that, that laugh stopped. You know, in America, we may have assumed a monopoly or ownership over certain things, but we're the originator of very few. Well, you know. Even English is a hodgepodge of several languages. Mm -hmm. um, English is actually a bit of English, a bit of French, Man. a bit of Latin. See? It, it, it is a hodgepodge language. Uh, if you go back to the etymology of a word, and the etymology is the origin of words, you will find a lot of these words in English are French, Spanish, Latin. Uh, and so it's a hodgepodge language is what it really is. But again, because of how the cultural thing, and that's why I try to tell people we want to be able to view the Bible from the correct lens. That's why I say you need to understand that it's Hebraic. I remember your eyes and the revelation you got when I told you that Christianity was not a not a, a Western religion. Well, I've been telling so many people that when you said it was a Middle Eastern religion, it hit right then. I'm like, whoa, that makes perfect sense because the very first question that popped up in my mind after that was, wait a minute, where was Jesus born? Yeah. America didn't exist then, not in this sense anyway. No, no. See, and, see, that's what I'm saying. Once you get people to get into the right perspective, now everything else will make more sense to you and you'll start to receive it in the correct manner because it's still taught in a way to make you think that those are all white people. And it's not being racist. If anything, it frees people. Because it frees their thinking, it, 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 it gets them in the right perspective of how to look at it. And, that, and that's what it boils down to. Really, when you look at the Bible from the right perspective, it kills racism. See, people miss it. And sometimes black folk will fight you worse than white people about it. But what it is, is they don't realize they have been dominated by false thought. Because it... Anybody who got a half an ounce of sense and has done any study will know that Christ had to be a person that was cemented because Hebrews were cemented people. They were. See, the way they teach it today, they, they, they want to say that Hebrew, uh, Jewish is a culture. No, originally it was, a, it was a racial group. They were a racial group. And again, what happens is people have not gone back and look at the time of Noah and the flood. Quentin and I were talking about this last night. What happens is people get caught up in the flood and the rainbow and uh, the dove. And they forget that it was Noah and the sons. But see, it's clearly stated in Genesis, what, six chapter? But what happens is it's not taught. See, by people not really teaching it. And here's what happens too. Some people are taught it, but they won't talk about it on purpose. 
This is one of the biggest things that I learned when, when I studied with Bishop Williams. He reminded me a lot of this stuff has been taught to many pastors, but because of how stuff has been set up, they don't want to rock the boat because they worry about their money. That's what that's, yeah, because if they you know, if they start teaching some of this truth, folk can get walk out of their church. Now these pastors are bound. See, and see, they trying they trying to figure out about the programs that they want that they want to do, and they worry about finances instead of God being their source. They worry about men, and unfortunately, too, too many denominations have been set up that deacon boards got too much power over pastors, and they can vote them out or fire them. And so, because of how man to set stuff up, again, if, if a man would, uh, and we're going to get to this point that I was talking about earlier, about part of the Day of Atonement is, is that you fast. If you begin to fast and pray and seek God's face, uh, God will change some of this stuff. And, and men and women got to stop being scared and, word, word, and over worried about uh their parsonage and and uh worried about the the car the church going by and what they're gonna have and they need to start seeing God's face because I believe the Lord's gonna fix it so he gonna start to <coughs> see he's been merciful to some people and after a while the Lord's gonna start withdrawing some of that mercy because there are things that need to be done that because we got too many men and women whom God did not call a preach still out here that those of us who have the call, we can't continue to slack in stuff that we've been slacking in. Just like years ago, there was a pastor <coughs> at a church, and I won't call the church out, but my wife, well, we my family, we visited the church. This man knows he's been called to, to pray for the sick, but he doesn't want to because he knows that he'll be persecuted. He don't want to go through the persecution. So he, so he doesn't want to pray for the sick. So see, but see, I don't know what God's doing with it now because he's he has another church now. He's not, he's not that church he was years ago. They got a whole different pastor because I think in, in their denomination they move around. Um, but see, after a while, God gonna gonna, gonna call him out and gonna tell him you either gonna pray for the sick like I called you to, or certain stuff gonna go down. Does he realize this probably either? People dying or dead because but, he's refusing. I, I, I agree with I agree with you on that. That's that's what scares me about it because um, I'd rather be persecuted because I'm doing the right thing as opposed to uh, me trying to duck persecution by not doing it. But you know, but thing with me is I see people suffer anyway. But um, you're right. I'm sure people have died and have been sick. Didn't, didn't have, have to be. To. Didn't have to because he refused to pray for the sick. He doesn't want to go through the persecution. He knows it's right. He knows it's the right thing, but he don't want to go through the persecution. And see, and, and, and again, I remind people, anybody who's watching me now, and you think that it's wrong to pray for the sick, why does your church have a sick and shut-in list? Why, why does a pastor, or even who reads your announcements, every Sunday say, pray for our sick and shut-in? Stop thinking about what I just said now. Any pastor who is fussing and arguing against praying for the sick, against laying hands on the sick, against anointing people with oil, uh, for them to be prayed for, if you're arguing and fussing about people who are on TV or on the radio praying for the sick, stop and think about it now. Don't you have a sick and shut in list? Most churches do. And usually, y'all. Y'all, if you don't call everybody's name out, y'all do say, uh, pray for a sick and shut in. And, you know, some people, if they, if they don't have them on the list, they got them in, in, in the program. Some churches put everybody who's on the sick and shut in list on the program. So, if you believe in, in, in supposedly Yahweh Jehovah, well, one of his names is from the Oshibari this Sunday day. Jehovah Rapha. So, boy, I felt that when I said that. So, if you don't believe that he can heal the sick, 
the way your city should have lived. You need to shut it, you need to shut it down. You need to have it anymore. Mark yeah. 16, straight up, everybody's supposed to be doing it. Yeah, everybody's supposed to be doing it. And, I, and I've been an advocate of it for really about 38, 39 years. I, I mean, I got ordained uh, in, in 79, but I was praying for the sick before 1979. So the whole thing about it is, is anybody who wants to fuss about laying hands on the sick, you're not biblical. I mean, that just, let's, let's, let's just call it like it is. It is unscriptural not to pray for the sick. If we are to emulate Jesus, who is our chief apostle and our high priest, then it is our obligation to pray for him. And if we're not doing it, we are being remiss and we, it is the sin of omission. It, it, it's a sin of omission. I want people to understand that God will honor faith. And if you just say, well, Lord, let me read you the word. And I'm, I'm very serious about this. If you read the word, the word of your congregation and say, do we believe what the Bible says? See, I, I would say, as, as, as y'all would say, I say y'all because y'all, 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 the, the young generation, the way y'all would say it is, you put them on blast. I mean, because it boils down to either you believe what the word says or you don't. I mean, that's all it simply boils down to. I simply believe what the Bible says. And, and, and Quentin used to ask me, he said, well, Dad, you know, how do you pray for the sick? How do you get these miracles? I said, well, all I do is pray because I'm not the healer. See, I'm not the healer. That's why I tell people I'm not a faith healer. I don't like that phrase. I don't like that terminology. And I tell people, being a healer is not a faith healer. He Dr. Lester Sumrall was not a faith healer. Mar Cirillo is not a faith healer. Mary Hickey is not a faith healer. Kenneth Copeland is not a faith healer. Guess what? Jesus Christ is not a faith healer. We are to emulate Jesus. If we are Christians, then we are to be Christ-like. Jesus prayed for the sick. Then we are to emulate or do the things that Jesus did. So let's just kill that lie out. Guess what? If you will spend time before God on the Day of Atonement, and repent of that sin of fighting the church. Because you're fighting Jesus if you say God don't heal the sick. If you'll spend time before God, God see, I'm a, this is this is very, very different. Um, there, there are many different types of fasts. Uh, Jim, you think of the three-day fast as the Esther fast. Uh, if you go and read about Esther, You'll see how she was smart enough to call her fast. She didn't just fast herself either. She told Mordecai, you tell the, you tell the Jews to fast. I'm telling uh, uh, all my handmaids to fast. Because I'm going to go before the king. It ain't time to go before the king. Really, by law, she could have been killed. Because it was a set time to go before the king to make a request. I mean, even just to see it. So she said, we need God to move quickly. Because Haman means to, need to get, get all of us killed. Because a lot of people didn't know Esther was a Jew. She was a Jewess. So the thing about it is, is God honored it. And she went, she stood in the court. And the king said, he bid her to come to him. And God turned that thing around. So generally, you think of a three-day fast as being an Esther fast. Then there was a time when, when uh, uh, Daniel fasted, and it was 21 days, but it was because of the warfare. And what did the angel say? God heard your prayer and answered the first day, but what the king of Persia was held me. So sometimes God has already sent the answer, but the enemy is fighting, trying to hold, hold it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I am too. You know, that's but that's why I'm so excited because I'm looking at. Wait a minute, 
The Day of Atonement is only a one-day fast. But this is the holiest year of the whole calendar. I mean, it's like the revelation that is really hitting me. I'm going like, well, wait a minute. Out of all the spectacular moves I've seen God do, this is the holiest day. Do you know there were Jews who don't have to go to synagogue? They won't be in the synagogue on Saturday. Did you hear me? And guess what? God's going to honor the covenant. Quit telling me today when we was talking. This is the wrong time that the devil pulled this crap. This is the wrong time of year for him to pull something like he pulled now. This is the wrong time for that because it's so much. Oh, yeah. This man. Oh, yeah. That, that's, why I said, that's why I said I'm so excited is because, see, that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm getting this revelation. I'm going, wait a minute. I'm, I'm understanding this more and more. This is the holiest day of the whole calendar. And it goes with the blessing after that, but this is the this is the setup. This is the setup for the rest of the year. W. V. Grant said this at uh, the first night of the revival. I went to the tent revival. He said, "Your greatest miracle is contingent upon uh, the." I think he said the extent of your miracle or the amount of your miracle. Depends upon what you're willing to walk away from. Exactly. I, I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking so much about him when he said that. And I said, and he said, listen to me. He said, this is going to apply to everybody in here, one way or another. And I said, Lord, he is so right because different things that he said was, we all are faced or tempted with different things. But our outcome is going to be dependent on what we are willing to walk away from. And that was just in August. Right. See, but see, I go back to what to what Bishop Park uh, uh, Paul, Paul said. But she said, she said, this is revival that you have prayed for. This is a revival that you have fasted for. And see, a lot of times, that's that preparation for when God starts to outpour because I see that as such too all of this was time he was right there this, this close to us even closer to you around the corner yeah. Yeah. yeah he was what maybe maybe a mile mile and a half if that yeah. if, if that far from you mm -hmm. and he still up but a few minutes from us he had been there at least a month we didn't know nothing about it. You know? The time we got there, though. Right. And see, that's it. Again, God's timing. That's why I said it was a Kairos moment, the way that the Lord worked out. If, but, if we, but again, if we had just known it, we could have gone to it days before. We just thought we were going to a Danny Davis meeting for that morning. And when I pulled up and I saw the tent, and I said, well, W.B. Grant, I said, well, is it, it can't be two tents. I said, well, Lord, I said, if it's two tents. And then I'm thinking, like, what am I going to do? I said, well, I guess we're fine. I said, we'll start off here and see. You know? That whole thing is no coincidence. I was led to put this back on about two days ago. Well, I'm, I'm, no, it's, it's, it is not a coincidence. We are still reaping the benefits from that. In fact, I've been in prayer. I've been praying for the Lord to stir up that unction. That that started in High Point. I've been praying for the Lord to continue to release that unction into the very atmosphere. Tell you the truth, the closest you live to that, I would hang. I'd be hanging out on, on that ground. I would hang out over there. I, yeah, you think I would? I just go stand over, go get me a, a chair. If I had to go get me an umbrella or something. Or put some shades on with a broom, I will go there and just sit. Because I know the power of God is still on the ground. It was something that was released. 
And I, I've been praying for the Lord to stir that up more into the atmosphere. And because God sent that man here at that time. And I realized, Lord, it was a Kairos moment because the Lord fixed it. So you were right there when I rebuked the enemy. You saw it for yourself. God fixed it. God fixed it so you were right there to see it when I called him out. You know, that's why I said, and it was it that was a Kairos moment. That was a Kairos moment, and what it has been doing, it has been building up to now. There has been a continual move of the Holy Spirit that He has been doing. So I'm really excited because I'm going like the Lord. Now I'm I'm able to really reap more of a benefit of this time. We've been on this calendar. Really, we started. This is 2014. Was it 2012 or 2013 when Quint put it up? But we the calendar. Yeah, but the, okay, that's the second calendar. First calendar he put up. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the second calendar. It might have been twenty twelve. It might have been twenty twelve. So, so what I'm saying is, we're getting more and more revelation out of it and seeing it. So, I'm looking at this day of atonement in a way I've never seen the day of atonement. I'm getting more revelation of that day of atonement now. Uh, and there's so many celebrations around the country. The, see what I'm saying? The body of Christ, we're getting more knowledge, and we are coming more in line with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there's, there's more outpouring. So now I'm realizing, and there's nothing wrong with uh, another kind of fast, you know, the like I said, three day fast, 21 day fast. Some people fast, uh, they fast just water, which I still think is the fast, you love fast. But some people, you might have a job. Your job might be physical. Um, some people will use juice uh, so they can get some some substance. Um, but the thing about it is, is and that's and that's powerful. But I'm looking at the day of atonement is a one day fast, and this is what the holiest of all the holidays. If nobody, this would be a great time for people who've never done a fast. The best time to do it. The great time that, to start. That's what, that's what, and, and that's my point. Uh, because this thing is based on, the Bible says what? Brethren, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God, that you will present your body, <laughs> excuse me, as a living sacrifice. Holy Supper, which is your reasonable service. A one, I, I see this as this one day fast can be the most important, most powerful time that you could ever fast. I'm thinking I've known people to fast 21 days. I don't want to fast 40 days. I remember Paul White was talking about uh, her pastor in uh, Lord, I know that man's name. I know him just as good as anything. I'm trying to remember his name. Huh? Yes, it, it, it uh, yeah, it, it was. Something, something she was right. talking about the Hebraic calendar today. Yeah, but see, but see, this is happening because the body we getting more knowledge, and we're learning, we are learning how to move on God's God's cycle and God's time. You see, as we're getting more and more in line with God, we're able to move in greater power and anointing because we're we're we're, 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 we're the original. So we're moving, we're, we're literally moving in God's time. So this right here, this one day fast can be like a 40 day fast otherwise. Why? Because it's that holy time. That acceleration. It's that acceleration. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that time that, that time. So that's why I'm so that's why I'm so excited. And I said, boy, as the Lord has blessed us and given us more and more understanding. <clears throat> so I was saying to everybody, um, go Google Yom Kippur. Uh, the Day of Atonement, uh, the, he the he Hebrew calendar. Spend some time and try to learn something about it. And it is, if possible, fast Saturday. And if you can, fast from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Because all Jewish holidays, all Hebrew holidays, start at sundown the day before. And this is a one-day thing, the Day of Atonement. So I believe if you will fast this one day, 
It's going to be like fasting multiplied days. Because it's the holiest day of the whole Hebraic calendar. So this is a time of great time for blessing. So remember, your consecration is what makes this whole thing. So I'm, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. So, if you can, if you got to do some type of work, then drink some juice. Just drink juice of some kind. But if you don't have to work, just drink water. Spend time in prayer. Uh, you might have some music you want to listen to. You know, read some scripture. Spend time Saturday with God. Spend as much time with him as you can. So like I said, I'm excited. I see this one day as being like 21 days or 40 days because it's the holiest day of all. If we want to spend it as a time of reflection and repentance and a time for the Lord. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait because I, I just know something, you know something good is really about to really, really get explosive. Um, if uh, if you want to, you can inbox me, uh, you know, uh, some prayer requests. You can tell your friends um, to do the same thing. Because I'm definitely going to be praying not just for myself, but uh, certainly going to be you know, be praying for other people's needs. But I'm certainly going to be uh, before the Lord for myself. So this is this is what we need to do for this day of atonement. Because again, this is the beginning of the new year, of God's new year, and we, you know, we, we're setting the stage. We are setting the stage. Uh, we, we are observing the feasts, and as more and more, as we observe these feasts and do more and more, things are gonna happen. So we're gonna buy the devil. We're gonna buy the devil. We're gonna, we're gonna eat him up. You no, know, I just thought about you know how people <clears throat> come January. They have all these New Year's resolutions. resolutions. And I, I, I mean this partly funny, but honestly, seriously, about how they make all these resolutions. Mm -hmm. And they make good on it for about a month or so, and it almost always dwindles off. And they almost never actually follow it through. Mm -hmm. Well, to be honest, if they actually took some of the same resolutions and did it on the red calendar starting at the beginning of the real New Year, mm -hmm. Not only will they actually fulfill a lot of those things, but I really feel that they got to give them even more insight and instruction on how to carry those things out that they normally wouldn't get. Um, that was for somebody. I just keep hearing something about business. Mm -hmm. Business ideas. Well, you know, somebody may want to start a business or... They may need to do something to refresh the business they may have, but uh, like you said, though, because um, I thought about what you were saying, making a reference to about the resolutions. This is a time to make the right ones about what you want to do for the Lord. You know, what you, how you want to get yourself together. Matthew six and thirty two. Yeah. Get that. Yeah. Yeah. See. 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 see you know. That's that. That's the real. Like you say, these are the real resolutions. Cause, cause what God says, when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all the things shall be added unto you. So, you know, when we start getting our stuff aligned right with God, then He's gonna get our stuff right. That's that's why I was. That's why I said I'm, I've gotten so excited about it. Cause I said, wait a minute, I'm really beginning to really understand this. You know, I was reading the Bible. I said, wait a minute, Lord, this is the holiest day of the year, and part of it is the fast. You don't fast on the holiest day of the year. So if you fast on the holiest day of the year, you know, and there's certainly nothing wrong with fasting 21 days, nothing wrong with fasting 40 days. But if God, you're going to tell me that this is the day of atonement, and if I come before you and empty myself and come before you and just spend my time with you on the holiest day, that one day can be more powerful than 40. You don't fast at no other time of the year. Yeah. Time. That, that's why I said, man, that's what I'm saying. I'm, you know, just receiving more and more understanding of what he's doing. And see, this is how we have been missing in the church. 
you know, I, I tell people, I just, I just really began to study the Hebrew calendar just, just 12 years ago, and I'm still only there, just really starting to get into the meat of it. You know, I just now realized too, this might even be dangerous. This is sad. This really hit me. The whole watch night service on New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. December 31st, that we go to church for, I look at it, and honestly, if, if, if I'm correct in this, if we're going to have something like that at church, it should be now. this weekend. Well, see, and, and see, and, well, see, that's the whole the cool thing about it is, um, well, today, well, really, we started the new year a few days ago, but but I see your point. What you're saying, this is just a, this is just, see every day every day since the day of trumpets. The day of trumpets is actually the new year, right? So that was this past weekend. Uh huh. So that should have been watch yeah, night service. Right. That's really the so-called watch night service. Yeah, and I agree with you on that. When I get in the building, that's what it's going but, to be. But see, but see, I but I agree with you on that because that's what I'm kind of understanding more about about it. But see, there's some really great um, celebrations this weekend. Uh, 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 Mahesh Chava is having a conference. That's why that's why people start having conferences all these times. Because they realize that these are times to get guys moving and they're getting in that move of God. Um, Kevin Biscotti. They're having a meeting in Raleigh. Okay. Mr. Kevin from Yeah, from Raven Falls. Okay. Have you said white dude yeah. glasses? Yeah. yeah. They they having they're having a meeting in Raleigh. Uh start starting tomorrow. And they go they go it's gonna be four days. It's gonna be on the internet and it's gonna be free. Now Mahesh you gotta pay twenty five dollars to look at his. Yeah. You know, but it's gonna be a power, it's gonna be some powerful moves of God. It's gonna be some other celebrations. And I know Morris is gonna do something on his website. So so people are doing these celebrations. And so thank God for the internet because it enables us in the body of Christ that we can visit and since God's what? God's a spirit, He's everywhere, we can enter in in these in different parts of the body that are celebrating the event. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Mahesh's thing is going on, I think, for three days. But the thing with Kevin is going on, I think, for four days. So they're going to they're going to start tomorrow night, and it's going to be free every night that it's on. Lord have mercy. But since you're saying that, I believe, like you said, uh, uh, Jason, it starts with how God is breaking things, and that anointing that fell under the tent up until this time. Yeah. Because of what. Uh, hmm. W. What he, WB was talking about. Mm -hmm. So they, because after you go off, I'll tell you what has happened. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. So, so really, so really, this is this is a real blessed event with what's coming up. So, so um, like I said, anybody who's, if, if they can, you need to fast at least a sundown Saturday. The holiday starts at sundown Friday, and it goes to sundown Saturday. And I believe this one-day fast will be as powerful as 21 or 40, because it's the holiest day of the year, the holiest day of the calendar. Like I said, we're getting on God's calendar. And as we get on more and more, and I'm not saying that God won't tell you to fast later on, but I'm just saying, this is a significant time. I believe this is a Kairos moment. I believe this is one of those moments that God, God is ready to to meet us at the point of our need, and that uh, a whole lot of yokes are going to break if we are believing God for those. I believe um, if Jesus died once and for all and covered all of it, if we obey this one day, yeah, we'll cover. It. Yeah, I believe. I, yeah, I, I believe a tremendous. It's going to be a tremendous move of the Spirit over this weekend. Those. As as uh, as it said in the scripture, those who have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So we need to not be dull of hearing, or to be hard of hearing, but to be listening to what the Spirit is saying, and be able to move with what God is doing. And um, like I said, I'm just looking very very forward to to this. Yeah, I'm I'm. This is the most excited I've ever been. 
for Yom Kippur. I mean, really, like I said, I'm, I'm growing in my knowledge of it and understanding of it, and so I'm looking forward to uh, you know, what God is going to do and what he is doing. So just just believe for this uh, this weekend to be one of the most powerful weekends that you've ever ever had uh, in your Christian experience. Father, I thank you, Lord, for for your word. Lord, I thank you for your revelation. Father, I pray that those who are, are listening and those who are watching, Lord, that they're not dull of hearing and that they can ishbara da or spirit under da Father, I pray, Lord, that you will move, Lord, and wait for us, North Carolina. I just out of a sword of Shandra or spirit under the Ishmael da Sandra or the Sandra or Shba. Roma de Sabah Samara Sindra O Shimara Dera Tabisondo. Rosa Bo Shimara da Sabah Samara Dera Tabasa. Roma de Sibishondra O Shimara Dera Tabis Mara Dera Taba. Roma de Shimara Sindra O Shimara Dera Tabisondra O Spa. Roma de Sandra O Shimara de Sindra O Spirida. Roma de Sibishimara Dera Tabisabara Dera Tabasandri. Roma da Sabah Samara de Sindra O Shimara de Sindrida. Roma de Sebeshimara de Sindra Oshimara de Tabasa. Roma de Sebeshimara de Tabasandra Ospa. Roma da Sabasabara de Sandra Oshimara de Taba. Roma de Sebeshimara de Sindra Oshimara. Roma de Sebeshimara de Tabara Dandra Ospandri. Rosa Boshimara de Sandra Obinidri Dasa. Ishmira da Sandra Oshimara da Rabasande. Lord, I bind with Rosa Bora de Sandra O Shirada Pasundo. Rosa Shandra O Spirit Andrew de Sandra Day. Roma de Sebastian de Sandra O Sparada. Roma de Sebastian de Sandra O Shirada. Roma de Sebastian de Sandra O Shmira de Sabaradono. Roma de Sebastian de Sandra O Shirada de Sandra Day. Roma de Sandra O Shirada de Sandra O Spa. Lord, we come before you and ask about Samara there to be Sandra Uzba. Roma de Sebeshimara there to be Sandra Oshira da Rada. Roma de Sandra Oshira da Sandra de. Ishmara de Sandra Oshira da Rada Sandra da. Roma de Sebeshimara there to be Sandra Oshimara de. Father, we plead a fresh covering of the blood on our jobs. Father, every door, every entrance, every exit, Lord. We pray for a double portion of your spirit to touch every outside tomorrow, this Sunday, though. Every elevator, every stair. I shall tell you, I sign the Oshira, the Sindra Dow. Every ramp, every entrance, so the Oshira, the Sindra Day. Rosa Oshira, the Sindra Oshira, the Pasoda. Rosa Oshira, the Sindra Oshba. Rosa, I tell you, I sign the Oshira, the Zardo. Rosa Oshira, the Sindra Oshba. Roma da da basendo o shira da sendo o sha. Rosa o shira da sendo da. Roda o shibara da sendo o shira da da basada. Rosa o shira da sendo o shira. Roda o shira da sendo o shira da da sande. Roma da da basendo o shira da sendo o shba. Rosa o shira da sendo o shme. Roma da sendo o shira da basando da. Father, touch every school, Lord, from preschool, Lord, to college. Rada Badala Basandra O Shira Da Sandra Da. Father, touch Rada Sandra, Lord, every building on every campus, Lord, in Greensboro, Lord, every campus, Lord, every building, Lord, every college, Lord, every elementary school, every preschool, Lord, every junior high, Lord, every middle school, Lord, every high school. Father, let your spirit saturate, permeate, Lord, the very grounds that they go to school, Father. Father, purge, Lord. Father, Asia, right down my Sunday. Father, cleanse all those demonic forces, Lord, that are at those schools, Lord. Asia, my right down my Sunday. And Lord, let your spirit go, Lord, go to the houses. Lord, some of these kids, Lord, in the houses, Lord, their parents are in the all kinds of wicker, all kinds of witchcraft. Ishmael by Sunday, Lord, they Ishmael by the drugs. Ishmael by Sunday, Rosso Ishmael, the Sindra Ishmael by that. Robert Ishmael by Sunday, Ishmael by Sunday that. Ishmael by Sunday, Ishmael by that. Rosso Ishmael by Sandro, Rosso Ishmael by Sandro Osba. Robert Ishmael by Sunday, Ishmael by that. 
Rosso Shirada Sendra Oshma, Robert the Basando Oshirada Basandi, Ishimera the Sendra Oshirada Sandida, Robert the Sebesabo de Sendida. Father, I bind that person I saw this morning in the name of Jesus. You are the Oshimara de Sendra Oshirada, Rosso Esmera Sandodo, Rosso Shanga Oshirada. Robert the Basando Shirada Sandodo, Rosara Basando Oshirada. Rose showed the same as me. Rose Shimara there to be sold out. Robert Eda Basando era the same to that. Rose Arabasando is me. Roda Oshira the same to Oshirada. Robert Arabasando era the Sando. Roda Ishira the same to Oshirada. Rose is Pirada Sando. Ishmira the Sando Oshirada Basande. Father of the Basundo, Oshirada, and Rodesma, Rodo Oshira, the Sendo Oshira, the Rada, Rosso Oshira, the Amasando Oshima, Rode Shendo Oshira, the Sendo Oshima, Rodo and Shamara, the Sando Oshirada, Rodo Oshira, the Sendo Oshirada, Rodo Oshira, the Sendo Oshirada Sunday, Robert the Besondo Rada Sunday, Father Let Rada Sabatu, the Sendo Oshirada, Robert the Sendo Oshira, the Sendo Da. Lord, those who are Lord either watching Lord or listening Lord in Shabbat or descended out, Father, I pray that the spirit of revelation, Lord, and knowledge will come unto them. The spirit of interpretation, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will be able to understand what is being said in the spirit realm. Ishara descended out. And Lord, that they will have dreams and visions, Lord. That Ishara Asande, that revelation knowledge will come unto them. That they may understand, Lord, what the mysteries that are being spoken here now. We saw Ishara descended out. Robert Adam Asande, Ishara descended out. Rose, Shimera, the Sindra, O Shirada, Robert Adabasando, Shirada, and Abasa, Robert Sindo, Shirada, Sindra, Osba. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those dominion surges, Rada Sodo, Shirada, Sondo, O Shirada, Robert Ashala, Basondo, Reda, Bishorada, Sindra, O Shirada, Robert Elibis, Sindra, Shirada, Sindra, Robert Elibis, Sondo, Shirada, and Asande. Rebe Sando, Shere de Sindo, Ushereda. Rasa, Tebe Shondo, Ushere de Sindida. Rebe de Rebe Sindo, Shere de Sindida. Rebe de Rebe Sindo, Shere de Rebe de Sindo, Shere de Rebe Sindo, Shere de Rebe Sindo, Shere de Rebe Sindo, Father, saturate and permeate that vehicle in the name of Jesus for de Sindo, Ushere de Rebe Sindo, Shere de Rebe Sindo, Shere de Rebe Sindo, Shere de Rebe Sindo, Robert Eddie Vicendo Ishima, Robert Banana Vicendo Ushira Nana Basa, Robert Bosora Vicendo Ushima, Robert Eddie Vicendo Ushira Nana, Robert Ada Vicendo Uspa, Robert Oshimera Vicendo Uspa, Father Give Ishima Vada Sandro Do, Robert Eddie Vicendo Deso Do, Father Let Vada Sandro Oshimera Nana Basa, Robert Oshira Vicendo Ushira Nana Nana Basa. Father, is there is there is a beginning? Rodo Oshira de Sindra Oshima, Robert Adabasando Oshira da, Rodo Oshira de Sindra Oshira da, Robert Adabasindo Oshira de da, Robert Oso Oshira de Sindra de, Ishmira Adabasande. Father, forget not Rodo Adabasando Oshira da, Oshira Adabasande. Father, reveal Rodo Oshira de Sindra Oshima, Robert Adabasando Oshima, Robert Adabasando Oshira Adabasande. Rodo Oshirada and the Ishmirade, Rosso Shirade Sindra Oshma, Robert Adam Sindo Ishmirade Alaba, Rosso Shirade Sindra Oshma, Robert Adam Sindo Ishmirade, Rosso Shimada Basande, for we bind with Adam Sindo Ishmirade Alaba, Rodo Shandra Ishmirade Basande, for we rebuke Ishmirade the Sindra Oshma, Robert Adam Sindo Shirade Alaba. Robert Adam Sindra is Shirada Basura. Robert Sindra is Shmira de Sindra. We under the soul, Redis Rada Bala. Rosso is Shmira de Sindra Ushba. Robert Adam Sindra is Shira de Radala Ba. Robert Adam Sindra is Shira Dala. Robert Sindra is Shira de Sindra Do. We under the soul, Redis Shira de Sindra Do. Roy Shandra is Shira Dala. 
Reshando or Shire the Sindhi, Riangro the Sira the Sorada, Reba the Oso or Shmira down on a Sunday. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what you are doing, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as we are fast approaching, Lord, going into that tenth tissue, Lord. Ishira and I, Andre, Ishira and I, Rosso, Shira, the Sindhi, Reset, and I, Sabara, the Sunday. Father, help us to stay on the right track, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be willing to walk away from things, Lord. But, Lord, that same, same sermon, Lord, has resonated very heavily with me, Lord. Help us all, Lord, excuse me, to be able to walk away. Help us be able to turn away. Help us, Lord, to die. Help us, Lord, to continue to die. And the more that we die, Lord, the more we give ourselves unto you, the more we are fit to be made meat for the Master's use. Father, stir up by the basura of this, by right inside the door. Stir up within us, Lord, right us about the fire. Rudo Shira, the Sindra, or Spirit of the Sundra, the Reshimera, the Sindra, or Spa, Robert, the Sandra, or Shimera, the Alabasa, Rose, Shimera, the Sindra, or Spa, Robert, the Sandra, or Shira, the Basa. Father, we just thank you for Lord. What you are doing, Lord, we pray again for light, illumination, understanding. Father, uh, help us to delve more to the spirit realm with you, Lord. Help us to understand this calendar, Lord, and how to move with you better. Father, uh, we thank you, Lord, for every miracle that's wrought, every issue right of our those, Lord, who come into the kingdom. For the first time, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the miracle of salvation, Lord, which is the greatest miracle. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blind eyes and the deaf ears. We thank you, Lord, for the lame walking. We thank you, Lord, that the lame can leap for joy. We thank you, Lord, for uh, every household, Lord, that you put him back together. We thank you, Lord, for every person, Lord, that's, that's coming off of drugs. We thank you, Lord, for that spiral on the Sunday. that somebody was going around, Lord, for a knife and a gun, they're going to put them down. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that's about somebody there or that. Lord, we thank you for a real revival, Lord, in the leading and moving of your spirit. Father, we pray that you continue to lead and guide us into all truth. Lord, continue to light our paths, Lord, and lead us, Ishmael, the sword of the center of our spot, in the path of righteousness, Lord, for your name's sake. Lord, we thank you for preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Lord, we thank you, Rizal, Spirit, and Spirit of all, Rish, Spirit, and Sandra Day. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that people are confused and confounded. So things have not turned out like they thought. Lord, we just bind Ishira, the Basura, the Sindra, the Rebbe, the Sibir, Shemira, the Sindra, Osba, Rosso, Shira, the Sindra, Osba, Rory, the Sindra, Oshira, the Sindra, the Osba, the Sandra, Oshmi, Rosso, Shira, the Rana, Sandra, the Father, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you, Ishma. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Rodo Oshira, the Sira, the Sira, the Sira, the Rosso, Shira, the Sindra, O Spirit, the Rosso, Shira, the Sindra, O Sira, the Sindra, O Bo. Rosso, Shira, the Sindra, O Spa. Rose Shimmer is Rota Sandra O Shirada. Rose O Shirada the Sandra O Spirada. Father, give revelation. Give knowledge, get understanding. Lord, I pray that you do a quick work. Father, I pray that you will do a quick work in the name of Jesus. Father, we shall do Sandra O Spirada. Rose Shimmer the Sandra do. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for doing it. She read our under the real soul sharing there right outside the day. Lord, we thank you for doing what no man can do. And let there be praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, I believe you felt that prayer too. I believe some of you may have uh, may have had a vision, or the Lord may have spoken to you very plain. Uh, I believe there was enough power resonating that some of you that may have been sick, that healing is uh, going through your body. Continue to uh, not only watch, but continue tell your friends about this page. This ministry page is to help the body of Christ. If you know somebody that's uh, in ministry, send them to the page just to help the body of Christ. That's what this is about, is to, is to help the people in the body of Christ. Uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, if you got time, say it. If you don't have to work, and if you got to work, you, you can drink water. You can drink water until you get home. Uh, try to, try to uh, fast. And I believe the Lord's going to do something really, really great for you. Um, you know, we're learning together about uh, how to learn, how to move more and more in the bread calendar. We're moving God's time. And as we do, great things are going to happen. Because he said, celebrate my feast. And the Bible never said stop to. So, you know, we're slow, but we're catching on. <laughs> but uh, and we're looking forward to uh, Saturday. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we tell y'all Sunday after Saturday. Uh, so if you can, tune in. And uh, if you can't tune in live, then try to go to the archive. Uh, we got, you know, we're streaming on Ustream. Uh, I think you got so now you need, you need, Mike can even stream on YouTube. I don't know if we've done it tonight. I don't think I did. I think I just went to just a, a Ustream page. Uh, remember the Ecclesia Greensboro. You can uh, uh, go to our Facebook page. Uh, you can inbox us anytime uh, with prayer requests or comments. And uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to serve the people in the body, the body of Christ. So, uh, Till Sunday, we'll see you.